And let's take a deep inhalation through the nose. And as you get to the end of the inhalation, take in a little bit more, really fill the lungs all the way. So you were filling a glass of water beyond the rim. And then let yourself exhale with an open mouth, just letting yourself really relax. And then let the lips gently come back together and begin to notice the space between the eyebrows softening and opening. And let yourself imagine with your mind's eye that you are walking out in nature and you see a pathway that leads you over a bridge and you will take 10 steps to the top of this bridge where you'll be able to look out over a river. So stepping on to the ninth step, feeling your body relax, stepping now to the eighth step, feeling all your muscles soften and feeling relaxed, stepping to the seventh step, feeling your neurological system releasing, sixth step, feeling very good, very open, Stepping to the fifth step, feeling your whole body uh, being receptive and open to receiving. Onto the fourth and the third step, feeling the um, anticipation of being creative. And now from the second onto the first step where you can begin to look out beyond and see from your bridge, another bridge in the distance. And you can see that there's a lot of fog between you and this bridge. And it's just one of those very misty, magical days. And the water is running underneath your bridge and you gaze out towards this other soft bridge in the distance and everything has this shades of lavenders and blues and this filter of softness. <laughs> So let yourself just feel immersed in this uh, beauty of this winter landscape. And maybe deep in the breath, let your inhalation and your exhalation become uh, connected and see if anything arises, any messages for yourself. And when you're ready, <clears throat> Let's see, take your awareness to the top of the skull. Imagine there's bright light coming down through the top of your skull. Let it cascade behind the eyebrows, all the way down behind the cheeks, through the palate of the mouth, down through the neck, into the chest. Let all this energy, like a shower, come down through your body and settle into your hip area, your seat of creativity, and let that pool there together. Rub your hands together and slowly with your eyes still closed, let your hands begin to separate, feel the energy and the creative energy between your palms growing. And then take both palms, place them just below the belly button, down into the lower belly. Just feeling that connection, feeling and allowing that movement to really bring you into the body even more, feeling the busyness of the mind now completely quiet, completely open and very much in the present moment. And then um, before we open our eyes, let's take one more deep <clears throat> inhalation. Breathing in, breathing out, and then gently let your eyes open and come back into the present time, present space. Okay, I'm going to, um, so you need to have a piece of paper that is a, a landscape perspective, a little wider than taller. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps. Um, basically, we're gonna paint this, I'm gonna move it down for a moment. Uh, we're, we're gonna paint it literally from the top down. And the difference with this painting is that we're gonna use some transparent colors and as they dry, we're gonna go back on top of them, which is really common in watercolors and put another layer. In fact, we'll, I think we'll practice a little bit 
once we mix up our colors, just to show you that how the transparency works. So for instance, an area where you'll see it most is in areas like this here, where the violet has a bit of the yellow in it glowing through. Um, so usually we are working towards having the transparency be mostly white from the paper. This time we're gonna a little bit have some of the transparency come from other colors underneath. Make sense? Yes. Okay, so um, if you haven't yet, you want to tape off an area. I'm going to see if I can just keep both images at once so people can see um, that you're going to be working in. And I'm going to get a scratch piece of paper. So you want to mix up. You want to mix up. Uh, Let's mix up our ultramarine blue, our yellow. Uh, you, um, what's the size of the paper we're working on? Um, Is it 12 by nine? I, I recommend, okay, so I think that this, this space that you're working on, it would be nice for it to be around eight inches high by about 10 inches wide in case you want to mat it. Mm. 10 by 8? Yeah, 10, uh, approximately 10 by 8. I made mine a little bit smaller, so there'll be white around mine if I put it in a mat. Um, okay. And if you have a mat there, you can just take your mat and use your mat to just draw your space, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, either you're drawing out your, your painting area or you're mixing up just so we can practice a little bit of transparency. Mix up some, and I'm sorry, I'm not completely prepared today. I had a lot of technical issues, but ju let's just mix up um, some blues. Some of the colors we're gonna be using in our palette, like the ultramarine blue, you know, and some violet. I'm gonna wash my brush really good. have to um, make a violet so I mix ultramarine and I think yes use um do you have it do you have a thalo blue or a um I would try mixing it from thalo and rose matter a, a cool blue and a, I mean a yeah I have warm. yes um what do you have I have ultramarine. You could use, yeah. The most important thing is not to use a warm red. Use a um, rose matter or a alizarin crimson when you're mixing the violet. Mm -hmm. Because the warm red um, almost makes it kind of muddy and brownish. Do you know what I mean? Um, So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this yellow just to kind of show you and you guys can do it too. I'm going to just, just, I'm going to draw, I mean draw, actually I should take some, just some very watery and then add some yellow to it. Um, I want that to dry before I do the next layer. So while that's drying, I'm going to start drawing I guess I'll do that. Wait a second, yellow. And I'll do a little bit of blue. Uh, I'll do a little bit of each color and then we'll cross. I had some yellow left on there. We're experimenting now. Yeah, this is on a scratch piece. After these dry, we're gonna put them this way so you can see the transparency through which, them. Which uh, purple did you use? I used a purple out of my kit, but you can see it's, uh, so I'll mix one here. I'll take some, this is my ultramarine and I'm going to take a little bit of uh, like a lizard and crimson in here. It's going to be a, a little bit more of a purpley. So 
So that's what I get with ultramarine and alizarin crimson. The color on the far right, that's blue. Ultramarine. You see, it's kind of a grayish, cool blue. Okay. I'm not doing them very dark. I'm going to, and then I'm, once these dry, so what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, with a pencil and do the layout for our um, painting while these are drying. Then before we, after they dry, we're going to take the same colors this way. So you'll see the transparency through them. And then we'll go back to working on our painting, our painting. So once everyone has just done that, just four colors, um, let me know. You have two violets, right? Yeah, because somebody asked me what color, and oh. this was a this was a violet out of my kit, and uh -huh. then this is a violet I just mixed from ultramarine and um, alizarin crimson. Okay, I'm ready. You ready? Okay, let's just do it like this. Who isn't? Is anybody not ready? Speak up because I can't see your faces right now. I've got, this is my main picture. So if you're not ready, let me know and we'll wait for you. Great, everyone's ready. So we're gonna let these dry. And now on this page, we're going to um, just do placeholders. Mostly it's, it's like horizontal lines here. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is the top of the painting, and I should practice what I preach. I should put out my tape, like I told you all to do, but I didn't do. <laughs> um, so from the top, that the top of the painting even though this is a foggy painting, it has the warm blue that goes all the way to the edge. I'm gonna get some more light in here. There we go. Um, Right. So then, um, so I'm just going to first draw this line here of the mountains. Oops, you can't see it. Sorry. There we go. The top of the mountains. And so this whole painting, when you're painting, most of the time, what you want to keep in mind is that um, everything about it is soft. There's no really, except for this bridge back here, everything is very soft curves, nothing too extreme, not like big U-turns, but like soft um, what would you, shoulders. <laughs> so you're just going to come down like three quarters of an inch and just do your placeholder for some very soft hills all the way across. The top of the hills are going to be a little bit of a hard edge. This, this top here, we're going to just blend in from the top down. So you're gonna draw this edge here, leaving about, if you were to, you know, just imagine maybe one knuckle from the top, <laughs> starting here. And you don't need to spend too much time on it. It's just a placeholder. I'll do mine a little darker so you can all see. Now, um, the bottom of these hills fades out, so you don't need to draw that. But about the same, you know, you're going to come down a little less than an, here, a little less than a knuckle, and you're going to just do um, kind of rounded tops of trees. Or maybe it's easier if we go. If we go, let's do it like this. So halfway would be here. Go to um, between halfway and the top and make a, like a horizon line. So this is gonna be your horizon between right around here. 
Yeah, that will be good. And this is gonna be where the water line is. And you want from your water line, you're gonna do on the right side, a little up underneath the bridge. I'm gonna make mine a little smaller than I did the first time. I want it to look like it's very far in the distance. So now everyone should just have this water line and this hills and then under the bridge. And then you can, if you go up, leave a little space, you could just put a, a line over the bridge. How are you doing, Mary Ellen? Okay. Um, all right. Now, I can't see all of you all. So if you want me to stop, just say, wait a minute, my pencil broke or whatever. <laughs> Okay, so from here, now we have these things to work on. So one thing to think about, or a few things to think about, painting is so much about seeing. So the more you just let yourself see and learn to see um, just subtleties and differences, and it's so much about relativity. So now that we have these main lines that we've made, now we have something relative to work off of. So if you're ever, you know, like starting this yourself, you're just going to start with like, how can I create relativity? Okay, so I know that this is relatively higher than midpoint. Now I have these. Now I can start to say, okay, from here, I can do kind of a fluffy place, placeholder for trees. And I can do that over here, a fluffy placeholder for trees. Now I can see that I did those a little high. I need more space for my white fog. So I got to lower them a little bit. So I want enough space from the bottom of the mountains. I want them to be able to fade off. I want that room for that beautiful fog. Do you have two tree lines on the left, Wendra? I think you do. Yes. So which one is it? You're gonna do the top one first so that you make sure um, that there's enough. So I'm gonna actually raise mine a tiny bit because I want more space. Again, it's relative that once I, I wanna know that the top of my mountains is gonna have some white underneath it for fog. And then I'm gonna have these, a tree line that kind of gradually goes down to the bridge on both sides. And then to give this more, more relativity, so this, so this second tree line here is gonna come in front, it's gonna come down here and give you another water line. So I have a water line here, here, here. It's getting a little complicated, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna start from the top again. I've got the top of the blue mountains enough space for them to fade off into white. Then a placeholder for the tops of the trees. It's just a little more fluffy. It comes down to this bridge. I'm gonna lower my bridge a little bit. And I've got the underneath of my bridge. So these are just placeholders. Then I have a second tree line that comes down because there's gonna, the, the land is coming towards us now. So there's another water line, water line, water line. If it's, and if it's not perfect, don't worry about it. It's gonna be all about the feeling. Okay, so from there, you're just gonna take 
like a squiggly line towards the side. So you're gonna come up about an inch here and make a squiggly line to here. And then you're gonna take from the bottom of this one, a squiggly line ooh, that comes to the front. We're gonna, so I want this as it goes back farther, I'll do another placeholder to get narrower. I want this to be bigger in the front and narrow towards the back. So there's gonna be another very, a lighter squiggly line that comes in here. So it gives the illusion that this is fatter in the front. I'll make this a little bit. And this you can do with your paint. We're just gonna be saving this as white. All of this is gonna be saved as white. And underneath this mountain is gonna be the main, that's gonna be saved as white. Could you repeat the middle two line, lines in the water? What is it? Middle two lines in the water. So here's a water line on either side of the bridge. The one that comes towards us. Okay, and then the second line of trees. So you have like a placeholder for the top of these trees that have like yellow here. These are the yellow trees. And then we have trees that come forward they are gonna have, maybe I'll make it back a little bit farther. They are gonna come down below this water line because now the, the land has come forward and they're gonna have a water line in here, like say about a uh, half an inch closer. So there's a water line here and then there's a water line here. The important part is that it's the same on both sides of the river. The water line in the light blue, like the water, water. What, what's not the other one, the two middle ones? Not this, this? one, right? No, in the middle. These Come two lines. The bridge. This? Yes. What's the two middle lines that you added? Oh, okay. So you can see here, this white goes, it's thinner here and it, it, it gets thicker as it comes towards the front of the page, mm -hmm. right? So my first one, I came from the water line when I do, you don't really, I guess it is confusing. You don't really need this inner one. Mm -hmm. You can do it from the bridge. Mm -hmm. I did that just so you could, I don't know. I don't know why, just, just how I was thinking. But if I, it'll, it'll be easier for you guys to think if I take away this one. You want it to look, get thinner and come out. So thanks for clarifying that for everybody who I was confusing. Now we're gonna go back to our colors. Could you, I'm sorry, I, I kind of, I'm still working on it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now just a little break here. I just want to play with these colors here. I'll move this out of the way. So now go, um, going back to our colors, cleaning your brush really good. Are we using a four? Um, no, a bigger brush than a four, for oh. sure. Okay. Sorry. Um, we're using... I don't know, mine's a little bit smaller, but I would use like, this is just for playing around. So you want, Oh, okay. I don't know. I could use a bigger brush, I'll do this. So I'm gonna take the lavender 
I'm going to get a lot of water in there. So it's, and I'm going to take it across and start to see the colors change. And then I'm going to do blue. I thought I'd mix the blue, but I didn't. This recording is going to be <laughs> a long one. Okay, so then I'm going to take some blue. You don't want to rub too much because you don't you, you want it to have a, a laying over feeling, not a blending feeling so much. Maybe I rubbed mine a little bit, but now I'm gonna try the yellow on top. I don't know how much it'll show, but it's hard to I have to put a lot more yellow to see. Anyways, just so you can start seeing the transparency of the colors and you can play more with that on your own in between class. I'm gonna do, because what happens here in the foreground of this, I put grays and greens so it, so it had some luminosity of a, because what happens is to create depth in a landscape Things get cooler in the distance and warmer as they come forward. They also get more high contrast as they come forward. So I wanted this to be deeper in tone, but I didn't want it to go dead. So I used greens and grays, so it still had some luminosity. So I layered like some lavender, some blue, some green to create depth. And hopefully that makes sense. It's going to make more sense as you do it. So did everybody get a chance to play with their transparencies a little bit? Yep. Anybody want to share anything before we start painting? Want to share? Anybody need to share? I'll just stop the recording for one quick minute here. All right. So now we're going to start working from the top down. And we're going to start with um, our warm turquoisey, like a wash. So I'm getting water and I'm getting my warmer blue. Hopefully most of that's, that's a blue that looks, you can tell the difference between it and the ultramarine, right? There's the ultramarine. This is the ultramarine down here at the bottom. And that's my turquoise. In real life, here I'll put a little bit more cobalt. It does not look that green in real life. It just looks like a, almost like a robin's egg for some reason, because of the lighting in here, it's looking very green. It does not look green. You don't want it to look green. That will look like you have a smoggy sky. You don't want it to have a smoggy sky. You want a foggy sky. Okay, so now we're just, this is gonna be very subtle painting. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, We're gonna wet the paper. We're not gonna, we're gonna wet the paper, but we're gonna leave so you can see here. See how there's white above the mountains? We're gonna make sure that we don't, we're gonna leave that white space above the mountain line and we're just gonna wet with, to the edge of the paper, leaving a nice white space above the top of the mountains. So it's just got a, a little bit of a sheen. Now we're going to go into our warmer blue. I'm going to wipe the sides of my brush so it still retains pigment, but it's, it's not um, full of water. And I'm going to start at the top of the page and just take that across so that I'll have a nice crisp edge on my page with white. And I'm going to let this blue soften into above the mountains. Now, if it's not very soft, I'll take a clean, either a paper towel and just soften the bottoms of it or a clean brush. So look, you can either just take your paper towel or get a very clean, dry brush and just make sure that that edge is very soft. 
because we're looking for, uh, always looking for contrast, softness next to hardness. So we got that top, top line is hard, the bottom line is soft, and there's white above the mountains. After you've done that, that shouldn't take very long. You're gonna clean your brush really good, get that glue off. So I'm cleaning mine in the water right now. Clean, clean, clean my dirty water. <laughs> And now I'm gonna um, dry my brush a little bit, get some of the moisture off. I'm gonna go into my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna take, but I'm not gonna wet the page first because I want the pigment to, to seep in a little bit a more prominent, but I'm just going to use the top of my brush. I'm going to wipe. It's a little darker than I want. Things in the distance are always soft. So I'm just going to come along the top of the mountains. It's like kind of a mid-tone, a soft, and it, lost and found. Just kind of, I'll make it a little darker in some areas. You know, you want it to be organic. Keeping it very wet. Then I'm going to take my clean brush and soften the edge, the bottom of it. So these just drip. This is the soft part here is where the fog is sitting at the bottom of the mountains. If I, I'm going to dip into the water a little bit, make this even softer here. So again, I'm looking for the contrast of the top of the mountains kind of have a lost and found hard edge and the bottoms of the mountain, very soft. You can add water to the bottom just to let them. Okay. Now we're going to, I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to do for the luminosity of the yellow to show through. So you can see here what the yellow looks like behind the violet and the blue. That's what we're looking for in this top part and in some of these trees here and in the water. So that it looks like there's, um, it's, it's what we call magic hour, the end of the day where the sunlight is coming through the trees. Um, so I'm gonna go into my yellow or my yellow ochre. And again, wiping the side of my brush and then doing the tops of these trees here. Now my trees, I have to lighten them a little bit. I, I did a pretty heavy handed there so everyone could see it. You might want to soften because the, I'm using my eraser because the um, graphite will muddy the yellow pigment. It's such a light pigment that even though I like to see some pencil lines coming through, I don't want them to muddy my yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna have them be a little more intense. So I'm gonna start near the um, bridge. I like the yellow to be a little bit more so that there's a focal point around the bridge. So I'm gonna start here and just kind of fade them out. And this is just to kind of glow underneath. And then on the foreground here, I'm gonna, before I do this, so now we, these, I'm gonna see this water line that you wouldn't really see it. I'm gonna erase it because now there would be trees growing in front. I'm going to erase that one and that one. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow 
here where the sun might hit this and a little here and a little bit in the water. Just a little bit some sparkle in the water. I don't know what that was. It was a pretty sound. I think I'm gonna put a little bit here in the foreground just to warm it up underneath. So this is just some underpainting, okay? Hi, hi. Now, while it's still wet, I'm gonna go into my yellow ochre. If you have a yellow ochre, if you don't have a yellow ochre, go into hi. your yellow. Hi. That's okay. No, I'm gonna to have to. What do we do? Which color? Do it in a half hour. Sorry. I'm gonna to have to rush at the last minute. Sorry? I I was using my yellow ochre for doing this yellow. Okay, that's good, that's good. So you're gonna use, it's it's cause that's, you did a light wash with that. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to get it a little bit drier, get your brush to a point. I'm gonna add a tiny, teeny tiny bit of brown to mine just to make a little bit deeper ochre-y. Um, getting this to a very, or you can use your smallest brush. If you have a tiny brush, you can do that as well. And while these paints are wet here still, I'm gonna just do a, a, a few little indications of like trees, little, and we're gonna, we can soften these again later with um, just a wet brush, but I want some of this texture. How do you do it? Um, just with a tip of your brush. Let me find a smaller brush here. What brown color did you add? Was it? A little yeah. bit of brown, a tiny bit of brown to my yellow ochre. You want them to be very th fine lines. Where are the trees? Can you see on the picture? Oh, okay. And these they're way in the distance, so you don't need a lot of them and you don't want too many of them. I'm trying to do it while it's still wet, so they kind of disappear. Oh my gosh, I did it in the wrong place. That's okay, it's yellow. Yellow can be covered so easily. There's no wrong place because it'll just look like a little sunlight coming through. No worries. Don't worry. Be happy now. <laughs> so you can see what, what we're doing here. In this one, you see those little lines in the background? Mine are very imperfect. It's my first. And then here. You can go back. You'll have an opportunity. This is a layered painting to, to add them more of them. Just wanted to do some while it's wet because it, when it's wet, it's nice. They start to disappear a little bit. And um, I like similar to what we did. I think we did something like this last week, didn't we? Where we did things. So we did some lines that disappeared or this was the snow. Well, kind of with the pansies. Yeah, with the pansies, that's right. Sorry, I've had so much going on. Okay, so we're gonna work our way, continue working our way down from the top. Um, gonna let this yellow dry a little bit and we're gonna go into the bridge. So the bridge is going to be, um, looking for a smaller brush. The bridge is going to be a very grayish blue color. 
So I'm going to, if you don't have gray, some, some of you don't have gray, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with you guys and I'm going to take my ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add a teeny tiny bit of black. Uh, not so crazy about that. I think I'm going to try adding a tiny bit of warm red, real tiny bit, just to dull it, basically. There we go. That worked. So what I did is I took red as a way to create um, a gray. Does that make sense? Yes. Can you repeat the colors? Ultramarine blue. If you have gray, just use it. Otherwise I took, let's see how this works. I took ultramarine blue with a tiny bit of cad red, a warm red, just a very tiny bit. And that's gonna give me a gray, a cool gray. You don't wanna put so much red in that it starts to look like a warm gray. You want it to be a cool gray, it's in the distance. And I am going to just come across the top of the bridge and go the underside of the bridge Gonna make it a little darker on the underside of the bridge. Again, we're gonna have an opportunity to come back and make the make these a little darker as they dry. And I also did some texture in the bridge. I just did like some vertical lines. Now are you you guys are gonna I'll give you a minute to do that. The yellow is um, drying. I'm working on that. Okay, yellow's drying. You're doing your bridge. You're breathing. You're relaxing. You're not feeling rushed at all. <laughs> I'm hypnotizing you to feel relaxed. Yeah, the the thing above the the. Never mind. I, I see it now. Did you add some also like under the in the middle there, a little bit of gray under the yellow uh, to the left of the bridge? No, in your today's painting underneath. Yeah. Did you add some a gray line there to the left of the bridge? This and then another line to underneath it, underneath the other yellow. Yes. Is this also gray? This is this is my heavy pencil line, so you guys I could see. see. I see. But it's gonna it's gonna work for me. I, I probably won't need to lighten it because I like the contrast here of this line. You see, mm -hmm. these are the two lines. So I'm gonna be okay with it if I don't. I could erase it, or I, I could just let the blue go right on top of it. So while the yellow is not. While the wet yellow is still damp, while these are still damp, but not too damp, they're drying, I'm going to start to mix up my, my next color, which is going to be, if, is everyone done the bridge? Tell me if you have not done the bridge yet. Great, everyone's done the bridge. So as colors move forward, they get warmer. So we're going to take our ultramarine blue. Um, mine had a little bit of gray in it. Uh, oh, well, there we go. So we're going to take our ultramarine blue and we're going to add a little bit of our purple to it. So hopefully you still have some purple mixed up. So we'll have a very, like a cool lavender color. And we're gonna take, that's gonna be our next layer coming forward. So I'm gonna wipe the side of my brush so it's be a very transparent layer. And I'm gonna come in here with it. So I'm gonna come under here.
looking like that is viable. Okay, so all in this area is going to have this soft purple. That's a combination of the blue and the purple. My my painting I did today is a little bit darker, so you guys could see it. But it's you know it's probably going to. I'll lift a little bit. It's probably going to dry a little lighter anyways. And again, you want it to be kind of lost, you know, imperfect, organic. It's nature. Lights hitting it, lights reflecting off the water from the sky. Now before, I know you're still working on that, but I want to work a little quickly while it's still damp. I want to go into my purple that doesn't have any blue in it and bring forward another layer of trees. So that the magenta, it's more like a magenta. It kind of blurs into that other one a little bit. So that this is getting warmer, it has the appearance that it's coming forward. I'm just kind of softening the edge here. Yeah. Where did you add it on the right? I'm sorry, I I missed it. In the right here in the um if you follow the Waterline on both sides. It's on this side. So it's on the same exact side. Oh, it is a little dark there. <laughs> well, I might just leave it. I think I'm going to leave it. And it's, it makes such a beautiful blur. I accidentally touched the page, but I think I'm going to leave it. <laughs> you know, a happy accident. It's a good thing. What was the accident? <laughs> a happy accident. I touched the paper and it started to blur mm. and I like that. So I'm going to leave it. It's much darker than my original, but that's okay. I mean, I'm ex it's all fun and fun and games here. <laughs> it's blurring upward, which I like. I might even tilt the paper a little bit. I think I'll, I'll make it a little more organic by just taking a damp brush and kind of lifting some highlights out of it. So now while this is still wet, I actually can use it and do some, I can take my brush really thin and do some of these tree branches, use, just dragging the purple up. Starting to dry, so I'm gonna go back into, um, get a little purple on the tip of my tiny brush and there's a different brush, it's more receptive. The, the lavender, more lavender color, my purple is too purple, so how would I get it to be more lavender? And which are you talking about, here or the here? The bottom, yeah, the bottom. This one? It's too okay. cool, it's not magenta-y. Okay, so would I add something to my um, purple? You would you would probably, no, I think I would just dab it, lift it a little bit, and then add a little bit of, uh, do you have a rose 
color? Uh, yes, yes, I do have a rose. So, so add take, a, a rose color. Yeah, add the rose to your mixture, not to your page. Right, right. Yeah. But you uh, probably need to take a paper towel and blot it a little yeah. bit because you don't want it to get too too dark. Right. Do you see mine Here's starting to fade? I'll give you a close up of mine here. So I'm going from blue to lavender blue to la to magenta. Now I'm going to go into my hmm. lavender blue and make some more of these kind of little tree thingies. Just a few to indicate. I like to do it before it dries completely because they disappear a little bit, which is fun. Because remember they're way far in the distance. I'm sure I can't wait to see Lizzie. She's probably drawing each leaf on her branches. <laughs> if Lizzie's still here, maybe she went back to work. I can't even see every, I'm so tempted to see, to look at everyone. We'll have to take a break so I can interact. No, I'm still here, but I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. You're not happy? It, it's fine. It'll, it'll come together. I'm sure. <laughs> I've, See, that's the most important thing. Just have faith because you're still envisioning it in your head and you've left a lot of latitude for, you know, we're working in very pastel colors here so we can build and use the transparency. Okay, now, so this is very yellowy in here. I really want it to be, um, just the light coming through the trees. So I'm gonna add a little bit more lavender, uh, magenta of that magenta color. I think I'll start, let's see. Yeah. Okay, now Let's go for the blue. I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with our warm blue. Which is the? Uh, the blue that we used in the top of the sky up here. Forgot which one it was. <laughs> it was probably your peacock blue. Did you use peacock blue today in the top here? Oh, gosh. Um, a light wash of it? Not cobalt. Oh, it could be cobalt. Cobalt will work as well, too. Cobalt's beautiful for that. Ultramarine, I think? No, the ultramarine is the, is the mountain range. Okay, so it's the uh, cobalt blue. Very Perfect. Very yeah, so I'm just going to put... So you see where these highlights of, of lighter blue are coming through in the water? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that now first, the lighter colors, using the side of my brush. Uh, I'm going to, I don't want this, this line to show. It's a placeholder. I got to lighten it. This is not a road, it's just light on the water. So there we go. It just looked like the water, not a heavy duty road. So I'm just putting a little bit of this to, to it's reflecting the sky. Okay. 
and just tying the top of the picture and the bottom of the picture together. I'm saving the white here, but I'm putting just a little bit of it in my white because I know I want some sky reflection in my white. I'm putting a little bit here underneath this greenish gray that's going to be in the foreground. So it kind of starts to tie the whole picture together a little bit. Just using the side of my brushes. Anybody have any questions at this point? Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go into my so those who you keep working on that, if you're ready to go forward, you can just go into your ultramarine. Get a nice juicy ultramarine here. And wipe the side of your brush so it's not flooded. Get all that off, but there's still pigment. And look for where it's not too wet. You can come in underneath the water line. And then using the side of my brush, I'm going to get this one back here. So if you're watching, I'm starting to create the edge of the water where the water's flowing, leaving some white coming through because I know I can fill it in later. So right now, as I'm working, I can see that this is this is almost too perfect. I really wanted to have this feeling of water, so I'm going to have to break into my saved white a little bit, kind of have it fade out. I'll be able to break in a little bit more with my um, after. I will just use a wet paintbrush and. I'm gonna get my brush wet now. I'm cleaning it, getting it wet, putting it in the water. So now it's like a damp brush so I can kind of soften this edge here before it dries. So I'm imagining the sun's coming from this side, so I don't mind it being darker on this side and a little lighter on this side. And to create this illusion that this is coming forward, I'm gonna make this. Darker, but I'm gonna make it darker by going into some green and gray. So I'm gonna put some gray, green underneath here. I'm using a, like a hunter's green. Because colors also get warmer as they come forward.
Now I'm going to go, I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna go back. So when I look at this picture and I look at this picture, see what's missing is, you see this lavender here? I don't have that here. And I, I'm looking for the echo to tie this picture together of the lavender that's happening back here in the foreground a little bit that's reflected light and the overall tone of this picture. So I'm gonna go into my lavender, I'm just a little bit left here and put some of that right here in the foreground. Oh, I need to get, I had and used most of it up, but. Green did you use? Um, hunters? Like a hunter's or if you don't have, just take your green and add some red to it so it gets sagey a little, you know, you don't want a bright Kelly green. You don't want to upstage your other colors. You want a, a bit of a muted green. And now I'm putting in a little bit of this lavender. See how it kind of echoes this lavender back here. Maybe I'll put a little bit of over here on this side as well. Now I'm gonna go, I'm looking at my bridge. I want it to have a little more, well, it's nice and soft. I guess I like it soft. What I'm gonna do is just gonna wash my brush and my yellow got faded. So I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. Could you remind us how did we make the gray because I ran out? Uh, yeah, the gray was, uh, this got a little too, the gray was um, starting with your ultramarine blue and a tiny bit of warm red, like a cad red. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work, you can put a teeny tiny bit of black in. Remember black always kind of desaturates color. So I prefer to create my grays by using opposite colors. Most people do, most artists. Um, so I am going to now go into my yellow. I don't wanna to be too heavy handed about this, but I want a little bit of warm light in my water. Oh, so sorry. I love this class, but I have to go. It's 2.30 on the dot. So Susan, bye. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be leaving soon too. And I'm going to, we're kind of check in with each other at the start of the next class. And in between, if you want to email me, okay? Yeah, and I'll see you I have video. to get. I also have to get to the post office to return <laughs> my computer. But, um, so I just put a little bit of yellow in there and I'm going to put a tiny bit of that warm blue. We did get a late start today. Bye. 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 Have a good weekend. Email me, okay? What What did you add here? I'm sorry. Just a little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of blue of that warm blue to reflect the sky color that's up here. I'd saved the white so I don't have to put a lot in there. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording for a minute and I'm just going to check in with you all.